Hi everyone, this video we're going to learn how to use PoE to power an access control system. So an access control system is a system that will provide quick and convenient access to personal persons who are authorized and restrict the access for those who are unauthorized. This system is usually seen as like access door, con door controls and you can use this to get into rooms or buildings that you have been authorized to. This right here is what the motherboard of the access control system looks like. You, this is not real commonly seen like when we have the access control system. This motherboard, you can see there are a lot of power controllers right here, which we connect to provide the power. And right here, you can see there is storage for all the different kinds of information or data. We can also connect facial recognition and fingerprint scanners here for more detailed for more detailed information of a personal. So with this motherboard, we can make raise the security level of a building or a room higher than just using an ordinary lock. And as you can see, there are power supplies and a LAN port right here on the side right here. This means the power and data will be provided separately. So this is a non-standard PoE device, such as a passive PoE device. And today we're going to learn how to use a PoE system to provide power and data for it. So a PoE system is a system that applies the PoE technology, which is tra transmitting power and data through one single Ethernet cable. A system like that will make our setup very convenient. It cuts almost like half of our work because we only need Ethernet cables to connect IP devices. We don't need to worry about if there's any power outlets near the IP device we have. Sometimes if we don't use PoE, and we need to kind of add a power outlet at that specific location and that, that's like a lot of work, it might even cost more. So for PoE system, everything will be solved with one single Ethernet cable. More and more people have been using PoE systems for their homes or offices. It's kind of utilized now. And what happens if they want to add a door access control like this? This one's a passive PoE. So the passive PoE doesn't have what the PoE system requires, like a power handshake. The initial power handshake is like a detecting signal. It will send to the device that's connected to the PoE signal. If, it's a, if the device is PoE enabled, it will respond to that signal and then they two will meet at agreement and send the power the poe signal if the passive if it's a passive poe device then it will not respond to that first initial signal so then it will there will only be data sending through so in order to let our access control motherboard to fit in our poe system we're going to need the help from this device right here this is our poe splitter a poe splitter just like its name, it splits the, the PoE signal to power and data, two separate streams. So then once we have the PoE signal sent to here, it would receive it and then send to power, two streams of power and data individually to our motherboard. And that is how we will power our door access control. And usually if sometimes we don't have like a PoE switch or our network, our PoE network, we can use a PoE injector. A PoE injector will help us upgrade our normal network system to a PoE network system. In that case, we can make it more convenient. And today I'm gonna to help you guys solve both questions. So first I'm gonna upgrade our normal router based network system to a PoE network system, then provide the PoE net signal to a non-PoE device, which is our access control. So the whole procedure for this setup is the data will be originated at the router and then it will go to the injector. The injector has power. It will inject power with the data and then output PoE signals. PoE signal travels to our PoE splitter. It will receive the PoE signal, split it to power and data. The power will come out from here to this power extender. It will extend the power into three streams for providing power to different parts of the motherboard. And then the data will output from this LAN port right here to our motherboard as well. So it's quite clear how it will work. Now let's take a look at the steps. 
But first of all, we're gonna use a short patch cord to connect our injector with our router. So after that, you will see our injector is ready and now we're gonna connect our injector with our splitter. So remember for the splitter, the PO ESIC port is where the where it connects with the injector. Now you can see the power indicator is on and you can see as well the motherboard has the indicators lit on as well. That means the power has been successfully transmitted to it. So once this part is done, we're gonna connect our ethernet cable to our motherboard as well. Once it's connected, we can use network, access our motherboard through the network. Everything will be linked to the internet. So this is how it is. Now, you can see that everything's working. And whenever I, this is a sensor, I, whenever I wave my hand up upon the sensor, the door will unlock. Like right now, the green indicator is on. This means the door is unlocked. We can connect the, our door locks to this motherboard as well. Once we connect our door locks to the motherboard, every time I wave my hand over the sensor, it will release the door locks. So it's pretty easy. And just for you guys to know, if we have the doors outside and you know, the outside weather, sometimes it rains or you know, sometimes there's gonna be a lot of water involved, we will need to use an outdoor splitter because like any electronic device, our PLE splitter is vulnerable against water and dust. This outside, outdoor splitter has the same features, but also there's IP, rated IP67 waterproof, so it is really ideal for outdoor conditions. So when we're dealing with outdoor situations, like our, our the access control has to be planted outdoor, we can switch this 95 watts PoE injector, PoE splitter to this outdoor PoE splitter, and it will do the same. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them at the section below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.